Ladies and gentlemen, it's been about three months uh, since I last uh, spoke to this group down here in Baghdad, coming down from uh, Tikrit, which is where we are stationed. Uh, I know many of you are interested in the security conditions in the north, but I know some of you are interested in some of the other things that are going on in the north, so I'll try and cover both of those things in an opening statement. First of all, uh, in terms of security, uh, since June of last year, the significant activity in the northern provinces as we measure them have been reduced by about 75 percent across the board. Uh, it's gone from about 2,600 reported events uh, a month uh, in June of 2007 to about 650 in June of 2008, and that's continuing to decline uh, so far this month in July. Uh, the number of IEDs that we have seen uh, in the northern provinces have decreased by about 50 percent since February of this year, uh, from about 950 to about 430 uh, as measured in June, and those also continue to decline. Uh, that's not to say we still don't have threats. Uh, the largest threats that we are seeing from uh, both terrorist and criminal uh, organizations are suicide vest in the southern province of Diyala and vehicle-borne explosive devices uh, throughout the provinces, but specifically in Mosul. And what I'd like to say about those two things, uh, because it shows the barbarous and evil uh, intent of our enemies and why they must be destroyed in Iraq so con Iraq can continue on, is by our count, the number of killed Iraqis uh, from suicide vest has been about 250 since the first part of the year. The number of Iraqis killed by vehicle-borne explosive device is in the neighborhood of about 1,500. These are uh, random violent acts conducted by these criminal terrorists, and that's why we are continuing to go after not only the ones that do these things, but the networks that support them. Uh, continuing operations, I, I brought this map here just to show you uh, the areas that we operate in, as you all well know. Here is the city of Baghdad, and all of these provinces are the multinational north division's operation areas. Uh, we are continuing to conduct with my brother, Lieutenant General Riyadh, operations Mother of Two Springs in Mosul and Niniwa, uh, along with the 2nd Iraqi Army Division and the 3rd Division, 3rd uh, Iraqi Army Division, uh, with elements of coalition forces continue to operate in Mosul and throughout the province. Uh, we are beginning, as announced by Prime Minister Maliki, the Operation uh, Omens of Prosperity. Please uh, don't fault me for my pronunciation, Boucher Al-Kar, the Operation uh, Omens of Prosperity in Diyala province, and that will begin uh, in early August. And while those two operations are being led by the Iraqi army, we will continue to partner with the Iraqi security forces and begin conducting uh, our own operation, which is called Iron Pursuit. And now that's a, an operation that's directed against all the support zones of al-Qaeda in, in Iraq. Uh, and our message in conducting that operation is we have secured the key cities of the north we have seen al-Qaeda continue to be pushed into the, what we call the support zones, or the areas of the desert, and we will continue to pursue them into those areas, uh, and relentlessly pursuing them and showing them there is no sanctuary uh, until they leave this country. With that is uh, the security breakdown. Uh, what I'd summarize by saying is security is better in the north. It's better throughout Iraq. You all know that. It's getting better daily. Uh, right now, as we speak, there are over 1,200 new Iraqi policemen in training academies throughout our four academies in the northern provinces. Additionally, the Iraqi army continues to grow in both capability and size. Uh, we conducted, as an example, we conducted this last Wednesday a combined air assault with Iraqi forces in Diyala province that consisted of about uh, half and half Iraqi army, U.S. army, uh, at a two-battalion assault into an area that has been the uh, sanctuary of al-Qaeda, and we're continuing to cl clear those areas as well. Uh, this improved security has allowed a greater economic development in the four northern provinces, and I'd be happy to talk about that. The markets are open and getting better every day. Uh, 
The roads are being paved. As I flew down here for a commander's conference yesterday, I saw personally three different asphalt uh, crews on the different roads throughout different areas of the provinces. I saw hydroelectric uh, uh, lines going up throughout the provinces and being repaired, electrical towers that are uh, going to bring better and increased electricity. Generators have been moving throughout our provinces. Uh, uh, we just moved uh, several large generators into Samara uh, last week. And the exports are increasing as well. The oil exports, as you know, are at a record high. That also allows for greater political interaction between the government of Iraq and the provincial governments, which we're seeing as they prepare for the upcoming vote, and I'd like to talk about that as well. But those are my opening statements. With that, I'd like to take any questions. Yes, ma'am. I had uh, two questions. One, um, what your comments were about uh, some of the recent um, military officials who have talked about Al Qaeda leaving Iraq for Afghanistan and how that's affected um, your area of operations. And uh, my second question was in regards to Mosul, there have been reports um, before about uh, assassinations of professors and certain other professional groups. And I was just wondering um, what the situation is now. If, um, you're still hearing reports of that happening yeah. there. I'll answer the first one, uh, the first question about the al-Qaeda leaving Iraq. I, I really don't concern myself with that, to be honest with you. That's uh, for my uh, higher commanders to concern themselves with. My concern is making sure that we go after them in our area of operations. If they leave Iraq, that's fine with me. But all I'm concerned about is either killing them or capturing them and getting them out of the way of the Iraqi people so they can improve security in the northern provinces. In terms of... Uh, Individuals being killed, that's true. There are intimidation tactics going on throughout the northern provinces. Uh, Al-Qaeda, we think, has been targeting not only uh, Iraqi security forces writ large, but specifically, in some cases, Iraqi police. They are targeting, in some cases, Iraqi intellectuals because they know these are the individuals who are speaking out for a, a more representative Iraq and a more inclusive Iraq. So, yes, that intimidation and murder campaign certainly is ongoing. I don't believe it's at the level uh, of extreme yet, but there are some instances, and we track that every day as part of our significant activity uh, looks in the various provinces. Yes, sir. <coughs> there was a report said the failure of the operations in Mosul. Also, previous statement. Iraqi officials said they are currently uh, revise the operation in Mosul regarding the operation. Uh, is it really the first military campaign uh, failed in Mosul? Uh, I'm sorry, say again the last part. When the second phase of uh, military operation in Mosul will begin, do you think it's really the military operations in Mosul have failed? No, I, I would not say the military operations in Mosul have failed at all. In fact, what I would say is General Riyadh's operations have been a great success. Uh, there are still attacks going on in the city, but they have been significantly reduced. What is occurring, and I was just in Mosul last Wednesday, and in fact, I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. I was in Mosul last Wednesday, and what I saw compared to three months ago was a completely different city. Uh, first of all, we drove down the Baghdad Road uh, in western Mosul, and construction projects were beginning to, uh, uh, to actually be uh, done by uh, Mr. Or Dr. Chalabi. He actually has paid the money, and some of the construction projects are beginning to work now. So there's good emphasis there. And I'd invite you to come up to see it for yourself if you'd like to go out there with me. Uh, then I went to downtown Mosul, to the Bab al Tub marketplace, uh, walked several kilometers of markets, and there were, in, by my estimations, between 20 and 30,000 people in the market at that given time. Uh, I talked to many of the shop owners in the market, and they were saying how successful the security operations had been, but they ne were now looking for in improvements in the economy, better jobs, more people to get back to work, because, as you know, there's still a high unemployment in Mosul. But I think the combination of the security plan by uh, General Riyadh, by his division commander, General Abdullah, uh, in Mosul itself, by the security plan out east, 
uh, by General Khorshid in the 3rd Iraqi Army Division has significantly reduced not only the attacks but the flow of insurgents into the city. What needs to happen now, and the Iraqi government uh, and the provincial government is working on this, is continually improving the economic conditions of the city. Uh, when I walked the Baghdad Road three months ago, it was completely open. There was no one there. It looked like a bad day in a city that had been experiencing combat. When we drove down that road this week, there were women and children out. Uh, I, in fact, went to a barber shop and talked to some of the men that had opened a barber shop there, uh, talking to them about upcoming sports events and the Olympics and things like that. So there is beginning to be a return to normalcy in the city. Still has a way to go. And in fact, General Riyadh is continually conducting operations in the various neighborhoods of this city with two million people in it in Nineveh province. Yes, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Ahmed Jassi. Iraqi citizens uh, feel right when security uh, improved, especially in the northern province. But we are wondering now, we are, uh, my question about uh, professional uh, election council, uh, Iraqi citizen waiting for this moment after uh, eliminating the terrorists, now he is waiting for a uh, provisional council. You're talking about uh, Umm Rabi'ain battle in Mosul. Iraqi citizen uh, feel the uh, security, but the employment uh, uh, problem still in the city, a big problem in the city, uh, and it's, uh, it's present uh, a big problems in, uh, in the city, and it hurt all the Iraqis. Please, would you give us clarifications regarding this issue? Uh, on the elections. The question is on the elections, I believe. Um, <clears throat> The, the election registration is ongoing. Uh, in fact, I was just talking to some of the governmental uh, representatives this morning and heard the very good news that uh, of our four provinces, uh, three of them are the top three in the country right now in terms of voter registration. Uh, number one is Niniwa, number two is Saladin, and number three is Diala. So their, their voter registration is ongoing. Uh, I think we have to contribute to the campaign to make sure people understand that the registration for vote, voting is for all Iraqi people uh, and it is for allowing them to vote later on in the general elections that will elect their provincial councils and their governors. Um, in terms of security, what we have seen so far in the voter registration uh, centers, uh, I have watched, in fact, with amazement at the Iraqi army as they have secured these centers and made them safe for the people to come and register. And in fact, in some areas, specifically in Nineveh, General Riyadh has had to balance, as any good commander would have to do, uh, continuing operations with securing the voter registration sites. And he's had both of those things in his mind as he's planned his operations over the last several weeks and as he continues to do things. But he's been in very, well, as all the military officials have been, all the Iraqi military officials have been in close cooperation with their governments, uh, the provincial governments and with the central uh, Iraqi Ground Forces Command in terms of securing those sites so that uh, voting can be more transparent and representative across the northern provinces. Shukran. See. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Khartad Majalat Risbuhiya. Siyatudwa, yani, hal lakan. Can you give us more details regarding the military, upcoming military operations uh, conducted by uh, Iraqi forces in Idiale? Especially this uh, province witnessed so many uh, displaced and uh, uh, IED attack and BBIED attack. The second question is, can you tell us also about uh, where the Al-Qaeda member hiding right now? What the logistic support they uh, obtained from uh, where? Where they got their logistic uh, support? Yes, sir. Shukran. Um, 
The upcoming Diala operations, uh, I've been extensively involved. Uh, Lieutenant General Ali, who is the commander of the Iraqi Ground Forces Command, has literally displaced himself and elements of the Iraqi Ground Forces from here in Baghdad to Diyala province, and they've established a headquarters outside of Bakuba. Um, they, have, they will be bringing together uh, in early August uh, the elements of four Iraqi Army divisions, some additional national police, and they will be linked very closely with uh, the Iraqi police forces in Diyala province itself. Uh, General Ali has also had conversation with the Sons of Iraq groups. Uh, in fact, I was at that meeting that he had last week with the various uh, sheikhs and tribal leaders who were the leaders of the Sons of Iraq, and he's given them, uh, first of all, he, he thanked them for all their services to the province in the past. Uh, he then said that they, they must be aware of the ongoing, of the upcoming operations so that they remain secure as well and that they could best contribute to the security of the people of the province. And third, he promised them that in the future government, uh, as it, things became more and more secure, the government of Iraq would continue to work on getting the, all of them uh, long-term jobs. Uh, in terms of the security of the provinces, uh, the cities of uh, Bakuba and Muqtadiyah uh, have become relatively secure. Uh, there have been indicators and events that have occurred which is, has drawn the attention of the media, rightfully so, uh, such as the suicide vest that occurred in Bakuba last week. But in fact, that was one of uh, only a few events that occurred in that city last week. But it was so spectacular in nature that it, draw, it drew the attention of the, the media and the press, uh, rightfully so. Uh, but the al-Qaeda elements that we've seen have sought refuge in the rural areas all around the major cities. And I could point to areas in the map where we believe they are, and those are the areas that we will be conducting operations, not only with Iraqi security forces, but with coalition forces as well, to pursue them as they've continued to try and find safe havens in the deserts, uh, in the deserts and the hills and the, and the palm groves. That's all part of the operation. And I think with the amount of forces that are coming into Diyala, uh, some might say, well, al-Qaeda is going to run away like they have before in Mosul. Well, we've all seen that they didn't completely run away, that some of them went into hiding and then came back. And even as they tried to come back, we've gone after their hiding places and pursued them there relentlessly. Um, for, for, for my brothers, Diyala, the, the province of Diyala is about the size of our state of New Jersey. It is a very large province. And it conducts, uh, there, there are a lot of great things that occur in the major population centers of this, uh, of this province. But there are also very many hiding places in the rural areas, and those are the areas that now the Iraqi security forces have to go after. I think the increase in the number of Iraqi policemen that will contribute to this, as well in the number of Iraqi security forces that are going there, will help improve the security of this province. Shukran. Yes, sir. Um, thank you. One Iraqi paper said around 60,000 Iraqi soldiers and policemen will participate in this upcoming operation. Can you confirm that? And no. How, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, American troops will specifically help the Iraqi soldiers? How, how will they help yeah, them? How? Yes. Uh, I, I won't tell you how many forces will be contributing to the operations in Diyala, uh, but there are more forces than that were there before. Uh, they will, uh, uh, American forces will be contributing by partnering with our Iraqi brothers, uh, both in the uh, army and in the police. Uh, we will be providing what we, what we term enablers, uh, fire support, uh, some intelligence. I've, I've shared a significant amount of intelligence with uh, Lieutenant General Ali yesterday in terms of where we think al-Qaeda is hidden, and he's shared the same with me as we conducted this air assault operations. He gave me some intelligence that we knew nothing about. Um, artillery, uh, some logistics, a lot of engineers, uh, and some uh, aviation. And what I mean by aviation is uh, uh, helicopters that will deliver soldiers. So all the things that we term enablers uh, that the Iraqi army is bec becoming more and more capable of but has not reached the level that they'd like to be, we will be contributing to this fight. Yes, sir. Hi, Jonathan Blake with the uh, 
National Public Radio. I'm going to, I, I kind of have, of course, my hands are full, so excuse me, but I kind of have um, three questions, but I'm going to try and squish it all together. Okay. Uh, can you repeat one more time the, the names of the operations and how, how they're, yeah. I can. Okay. The, the first one in, in, in uh, Nineveh that's been ongoing for, since the, fifth, since the 10th of May, excuse me, is Uma Rabi'in, which is Mother of Two Springs. Uh, the second one, which is going on in Diyala right now, and please don't laugh at my pronunciation, is uh, Boucher Al-Kar, which is Omens of Prosperity. And the operations that we are conducting uh, throughout the North are lumped into the category of Iron Pursuit because we are the Iron Division. But you will see a bunch of other operations, Sabre Pursuit, Bastone Pursuit, uh, and that, those are being conducted by our brigades throughout the North in partnership with the Iraqis. You, you talked about hiding places, but can you talk even more uh, specific uh, challenges that will be faced specifically in Diyala when that operation gets underway? Um, challenges in terms of our fight against al-Qaeda? Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, the combination of how, I'm sorry, I didn't answer the, the gentleman's question from before, how they are getting funding to conduct these operations. And we're seeing uh, uh, kidnapping rings, uh, extortion plots, uh, 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 murders for hire, uh, as well as some other areas, corruption uh, in, in some businesses and extortion. Um, so th this enemy that we're fighting continues to try and uh, uh, take away from the society through a variety of means to get funded to do the things that they're doing. We're also seeing some what we call harvesting of weapons from the old Iran-Iraq war along the border. Uh, where there are just flat out some weapons uh, uh, transporters, uh, people who are dealing in arms, uh, who have no ideological bent other than making some money, uh, selling some weapons to the extremists and the criminals. Um, what will be difficult is, is it's hot out there and dusty. Uh, yeah. Visiting with General Ali, a couple of forces that were on the ground in an area to the east of the province uh, on Wednesday of last week, Temperatures were 127 degrees at the time, and soldiers were doing what soldiers do under heavy armor in both the Iraqi and the uh, American forces and doing a very good job at it, and would, they're still out there right now. Would you call this perhaps one of the, one of the greatest and most difficult challenges for the, for the Iraqi army to date? Uh, it, it is an interesting challenge, and I think uh, as we've watched uh, the Iraqi army over the last several months conduct operations in Basra, in Sadr City, in Amra, and even to a lesser degree in Mosul, those were all cities which had uh, very specific enemies uh, that, that the Iraqi army was going after. Now we're talking about an operation that is going across an entire province. It is going to be very challenging for both them and us. This is a big area. Uh, so what I think it, it might be better to characterize it as hey, this is not only challenging, but they're stepping up to it. Uh, this is an Iraqi army that a few months ago uh, was still building itself, and now they have a great deal of capability, and they're tackling a problem throughout an entire province. It's going to be challenging, yeah, absolutely. And, and finally, as you talk to Iraqis uh, in the north, uh, there's an ongoing drought. Have they spoken of it, and can you just talk a bit about the, the drought? The dr exactly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the worst drought? from what I understand, in about 15 years. Uh, the, govern the governors of various provinces, specifically <coughs> Governor Rod of Diyala, uh, Governor Mustafa of Kirkuk, uh, Governor Kashmula of uh, Ninua, are all attempting to look at ways to mitigate the effects of the, <coughs> the, effects of the drought. Uh, Governor Rod was able to get some additional money from the Iraqi government on drought relief. And he is, in fact, uh, in the process of drilling 184 wells. The, by my last count, which was early last week, he had, he's hit, completed 44 of those to try and get some drip irrigation systems. And now I'm really stepping off in an area where I don't belong into the farming range. Uh, they're also looking at some other techniques, which changes the way they do business. They, the Iraqi farmer, does business. Uh, we have contributed to that by attempting to get uh, a team Borlaug from Texas A&M University to help 
their agricultural uh, outlook in terms of those provinces. But in talking to the governors and some of the farmers and some of the farmer co-ops, the uh, crop uh, levels are down about 70 percent, and they're trying to work their, themselves through that right now. It's going to be a very difficult year for the farmers in all of the eastern part of the provinces. Um, and what's problematic about that is it will also affect them next year because of the ongoing seed value change and things like that. If you take a look at not only the, because it's all irrigations, not only are the rivers dry, but the key lakes in not only the province are down by 15 to 20 meters, uh, but also the lakes in the, in the Kurdish regions are down as well. So the Kurds can't share a lot of the water with them. It's a very difficult challenge. It, it's all, I, quite frankly, when I walk away, I say, gosh, the Iraqi people are unbelievable. They have dealt with terrorists, criminals, insurgents, and now they have to deal with the drought, too, and still they're standing up and doing some pretty good, pretty good things. Hope that answers your question. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum After the operation in Diyala, there will be more uh, operations. There is a, a timetable put by multinational forces, so the security will be uh, stable for all the province, even if we got uh, 95 percent. Is there a plan? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if there was a question in there or not. Uh, question number one. What was the question again? After the operation in Diyala, there will be more uh, upcoming opera military operations. Question number two. There is a timetable put by government or multinational forces so that security will be normal uh, in all revenues, even if we got 97%. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think I understand the questions. Will there be additional operations after the one in Diyala? Um, there is one thing that's occurring right now that's been very interesting to me. As we've conducted operations in all of the northern provinces, there's been a movement that's beginning to gather momentum called reconciliation. We have had over 2,100 former insurgents in our area of operation who have turned themselves in and said, I don't want to fight anymore. I'm tired of running. I want to be part of the political process. A lot of those have been... Uh, in the southern uh, Saladin area and some in the Kirkuk uh, northern Saladin area. But these have literally been insurgents who have come in. They have been uh, not hardcore ideologues, but they have been insurgents who have fought the government who said, we just want to sleep in our own home at night. We want to join the political party. In fact, one of them told me, he says, the future of Iraq is the finger, not the gun. It's a pretty interesting uh, uh, conversation. Uh, but we think more and more of that will happen as individuals begin to see the increasing strength of the Iraqi government in terms of securing their people. We are still attempting to get the right amount of security forces on the street, Iraqi police and Iraqi army. We are still short significant numbers in the northern provinces. Um, and at the same time, I think a growing economy will significantly help things as well. Right now, there's still too much unemployment, and when there's unemployment, people sometimes do bad things. That's a roundabout way of answering your questions. Will there be continued operations? There will be as long as the Iraqi security, uh, as long as the Iraqi people are threatened. Would we like to stop those operations and just get back to normalcy? Absolutely, but part of that depends on the insurgents uh, either going away or being killed or captured. Yes, sir. Ayad al Kalatiba. Do you think what the reason behind the drought in Diyala province? The Kurdistan regions got to do anything with this problem? No, I, I know that they do not. Uh, the reason for the drought is a lack of rain. Uh, if you take a look at the average rainfall within the last two years, it's been significantly reduced throughout uh, all of the eastern part of Iraq, but specifically the northeastern. The, the Kurdish region has also been significantly hit. Uh, as part of our area of operations, we, w while we don't have forces in the three Kurdish provinces, I do visit there often to maintain relationships with the thir Kurdish governments. And I've been to all the Kurdish lakes and they are significantly down in terms of their water level. So it's affecting the Kurds as much as uh, the Iraqi provinces as well. 
So no, in fact, uh, Governor Rod did in fact go up to the governor uh, of Sulaymaniyah, Governor Dana, and asked for some additional release of water, and he did get some, but not enough to completely relieve uh, the, the drought within the province. Yes, sir. تنظيم القاعدة القاعدة كانوا في السابق يشؤون مدارس تدريب الأرهان أنشأتم جامعة أمريكية في كردستان لماذا تنشؤون مثل هذه الجامعة في كردستان لماذا تنشؤون مثل هذه الجامعة في كردستان أو في كردستان Well, I think uh, there, there are schools and universities in both of those provinces. Tikrit University is very thriving. The university in Bakuba is a very thriving university and is back and operational. Mosul University is one of the biggest universities I've ever seen. Uh, so all of those provinces, are all, uh, they all have their education system, and they're all coming back uh, to a prosperous level. What I will tell you is one of the things that we are coordinating with the Iraqi government with is something we are calling a JTERP program, uh, Joint Training, Education, and I can't remember what the rest of it stands for. But it's, a, it's the equivalent of a, a community college where we are, in fact, uh, uh, training young men and women to uh, have, have goals and skills that will be returned to the society. And we are working very closely with the Iraqi government at establishing these very small schools to get more people employed to contribute to the communities where they live. Well, I don't think I have any more questions. Uh, thank you all very much. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. One more question. Welcome you in Baghdad. Uh, Can you tell us about the situation, security situations in Samara City? And do you think the quiet, uh, it's quiet enough to let the people return their home in the city? I think what you'll find is uh, the answer to your question is yes, the security condition has improved dramatically in Samara. Uh, in fact, there was a, a, I just saw before I came in here a report on one of uh, the U.S. channels about a reporter who had gone up there and reported uh, how security had improved there. Uh, and by the way, before I answer the question, I would invite any of you uh, to come up to any of the northern provinces, anywhere you'd like to go, and we will show you around the various uh, cities Uh, so you can see for yourself how security has improved. Uh, but in terms of Samara, the markets are beginning to open up right now. Uh, many of the people have returned and are uh, going back to their homes. There are still some challenges in terms of them getting, so many of the people going back to the homes that they left. Uh, but I think what you would find if you went to Samara is the, the mosque is being rebuilt right now. Uh, there is a corporation there. The, the streets where the construction are going into the mosque have been walled, so The truckers and the uh, construction workers can get in there very easily, but the rest of the city uh, has returned to near normal like uh, patterns. And I think that you would be amazed if you were to go to the city of Samara today uh, how it's improved over the last six months. Uh, the first time I went to Samara in January, I was shot at three times as I, as I uh, rode around the city. Just the other day, I walked from the patrol base down to the Golden Mosque as it, to watch it being reconstructed and talked to some of the people who had chai with a few shop owners on the street. And it was amazing, uh, the changes in the security conditions of that city over just the last several months. Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. And thank you for what you're doing. Masalama.